DNS. <laughs> DNS is used extensively in Kubernetes service discovery. So when it fails, pods cannot reach other pods, cannot reach external APIs or managed services, and the system fails. Uh, an application makes a get adder info call, which the C library then picks up and generates DNS uh, requests uh, destined to the cube DNS service. Uh, that service's cluster IP then ma mapped into an individual replica, and that replica then either answers the request with Kubernetes, uh, using Kubernetes metadata, or forwards it into an upstream uh, server. Uh, and today, I'm going to concentrate on two, you can three misbehaviors in the Linux kernel and libc. Uh, so the Linux kernel, uh, kind of data, Datadog in one of their talks, they revealed that the Linux kernel has this misbehavior where if a core DNS pod is removed from the pool of available endpoints, the Linux kernel doesn't clean up all of its internal state. So under extreme load, uh, some of the DNS queries will get mapped to the removed pod, uh, essentially dropping them on the floor. The kernel also has this race where parallel DNS queries, which actually happen in practice uh, on Kubernetes clusters, get, uh, has this race where some packets are dropped. So for example, on the bottom here, you can see uh, if a single socket makes two DNS requests, uh, those race through the kernel uh, DNAT might assign them to different replicas. Here, for example, core DNS replica A and B. And the first packet to win the race gets confirmed, and that mapping becomes the authoritative mapping for the connection, and the other packets just get dropped. So this is misbehavior in the Linux kernel. Uh, libc also can have these slight misbehaviors, and for example, uh, in Alpine, the muscle library. Um, so first, that makes all the, its queries in parallel. So um, it's very hard to mitigate the kernel race that I talked about just now. Uh, and also it has this slight stricter enforcement of the DNS standard. So all, if you're running on a cloud provider where the DNS is not strictly compliant with DNS, uh, Alpine can break your pod resolution. Um, so you really want to monitor how DNS behaves, and core DNS has very good metrics uh, out of the um, uh, kind of out of the box. So here on the top, you can see uh, monitors for uh, metrics for the volume of requests, and on the bottom, left to right, you can see uh, errors, duration, and response sizes. So this is great. You can monitor core DNS. Uh, it gives you pretty good visibility uh, with the following two caveats. Uh, one, you need to make sure that this monitoring is up even when uh, DNS is down. So for example, if you want to send an alert to your phone, uh, a page, uh, you need to make sure that works even when DNS is down. I'm not going to talk about that anymore in this talk. And the other one is it doesn't have visibility into the application. The three failures I just mentioned uh, don't even hit core DNS. So how do you get application visibility into DNS? So luckily you can get this from the operating system. If you monitor, UDP sockets and look at all the DNS requests and responses, you can analyze the requests and responses and get the same type of metrics. Uh, for example, here, uh, the volume metrics, the timeouts, latency, and, uh, and size that we just saw. Uh, by monitoring also processes and containers, it becomes possible to use the Kubernetes API and see what service has been uh, making these DNS calls and to get a per service view of DNS behavior. Uh, here is an example dashboard with timeouts, latency, and volume. And all of the data in this dashboard is per service. Uh, so for example, you can see, I hope you can see a misconfigured service where that experiences a lot of DNS timeouts. And core DNS is also a container running on Kubernetes, so you can get visibility to core DNS as well. So uh, this technique enables to get both core DNS visibility and visibility into how applications perceive DNS. Uh, how is it done? Using BPF. eBPF, sorry, the BPF system call has been around for several years and it allows user space programs to instrument the kernel using uh, uh, tiny snippets of code uh, in a way that is safe 
and high performance. And this is, in fact, uh, so useful that I want to tell you about other use cases that use practically the same technique. Uh, you can use it to map your application architecture and see if there's a dependency that you don't want. Uh, you can, when you deploy new versions of your service, you can see how that deployment affects upstream and downstream dependencies. Uh, you can detect network issues and identify misbehaving services that might be causing trouble. So to summarize, you want to monitor DNS, you should monitor DNS. Uh, if you can use eVPF to do it, you can get application level monitoring and VPF is useful for many other things. So please come reach out and I'd love to see you uh, come meet me and the team at the booth, uh, SE51. Thanks everybody.